Hey people, what's going on? So let me start the video by addressing a new viewer, apparently. Um, human nature is very interesting to me. So, the person was complimentary because they like my videos. You know, I do try to share something of value besides just talking. But they complained, or not complained, but pointed out that sometimes it's hard to understand my pronunciation well. Folks that are with me understand that I had an accident last year and I lost my teeth. So um, I do the very best I can with enunciation, okay? The update on that was that we did a crowd, we did a fundraiser to try to raise some money for me to help me get my teeth fixed. Raised about $4,000. I went back to the doctors. My blood pressure is way high. So I have made some adjustments. I continue to, con apparently I need to adjust more. I just took my blood pressure this week. You know, as I expected, it's very high. So I'm trying to uh, rec exercise more. But what I'm saying is this. I'm about to um, go and get an appointment at a public health clinic because they don't have any insurance. So I have to get the bottom of the barrel health service here in America. And as you know, when you're poor, you get absolute shit for health care. And also any money that you have, they suck it up right away. So I've been, I put that $4,000 in the bank, using it to, to chip away at paying bills while I try <laughs> to um, generate income. It's working, you know, it's like, um, if I go to a doctor now, it'll suck all that money up immediately because I have no insurance. So I'm, trying to piecemeal away a, a larger amount before I go in. The other long-term, my other long-range long, long range plan is I'm 60. I'll be 62 in um, 2017, and I'll be uh, eligible if it's still there for my Social Security. I'm not dis disabled. Anyway, I do the best I can without these teeth, okay? That's why it's hard. That's why my pronunciation is the way it is. My situation also points out the ridiculousness of the ridiculousness of life that myself, a decent person who's worked most of his life, paid taxes, can't afford Obamacare. I, I can't afford it. My seriously, my my income is so low and unpredictable. Obamacare is no help to me, and it's just a it's a shame about America, you know. America is such a lie. I remember the 60s, the halcyon days, but I also remember seeing that this is this shit is coming apart. So I just wanted to say that about the person who is saying that he can't always understand what I'm saying. That's why I list the titles. I try to remember to go back and, and annotate the titles of what I tell you about in case you didn't understand. My friend John uh, sent me a CD of music. John, it's very interesting. Our relationship is very interesting. You, um, and I'll be very public about it. Um, Modesky, Martin, and Wood. Thank you. But I've known about these guys since they got started, and the reason why I never talk about them is because I don't think much of, of what they do. Thank you, though. You know, uh, it's a DVD. I haven't got to the DVD part yet. Just thank you very much, John. Thank you. But yeah, I've had this since... This is like from their first album. And this was like an, the, from the dropper. And this was an extra CD. You know, so I got it as a promo. But I've had it since it came out. So I, I definitely know about these guys. Musically, what I want to also share is... Um, I want to celebrate uh, the memory of another musician who otherwise here in America you'll hear nothing about. A very important band in my history is Amundul II and Amundul from Germany. Um, started in the 60s, literally started as a hippie commune and then became a band. Split it off into two bands. One of the original members, well, one of the early members, Lothar Mead, the bass player, passed away yesterday 
and um, I just want to pay tribute to him. He was um, a jazz music, a jazz musician before joining, getting involved in rock. But he was in Amandol on some of their best albums. He doesn't play bass on this, but he's on this album. Some other stuff I have that he plays on is he was also an early member of the band Passport, Klaus Doldinger's Passport. And this is jazz rock. I just love this stuff. Love it. And another album I had pulled was Utopia, which was another side, not a side project, but it had a lot of members of Embryo and Amandul on it. And found out about his death through the posting on Facebook by the lead singer of Amandul, Renata K Knaup. I hope that's I said that right. Since uh, reporting his death, there has been a, a rather large outpouring on on social media, at least Facebook, that I can see internationally with the people that I associate with, a large outpouring of um, love and respect and remembrance. I do this because, and I'll say it again, music has always been important to me and it's for my sense of history, much more important than the politicians, who obviously are important because they make the policies that have, that have shaped the world. But most of those people, um, I wouldn't even want to share a sandwich with, um, as opposed to many artists and musicians who I love and respect. Um, and Lothar Mead um, is one of those. And so I personally want to um, weigh in with my um, words of love and respect for what he has contributed to my life through the music of Amandul and the other bands he's been in. Rest in peace, Lothar. I appreciate the feedback on on my videos where I my recent videos because it is my role in life um, to share what it is I I see. I don't know it's not whether or not I think I'm right or wrong, it's just I'm sharing what I see. It, you know, it seems to be helpful, and it seems to be helpful to try to frame it the way I do, which is, I don't know, this is the way it looks to me. I think that's much more helpful than people who insist that they know. Now, we have a lot of knowledge. We know how to build things. We have a lot of amazing knowledge, man does. But we're very, we're pretty, we're pretty emotionally stunted. We're pretty savage. Uh, we're pretty primitive. Um, we, we, ha we don't harness our intelligence well. We use it, we use it so destructively. And um, I, just po I just point it out because it's like, well, the only way that anything ever gets changed is, fir is first to recognize that something needs to be changed, you know. I had a long conversation on the phone last night with a friend of mine who was, um, was seeking some, um, she needed a, uh, some input, you know, and what I discover in talking with two people is the, whatever the subject is that we're talking about, it ends up that we're talking about the same thing, which is ultimately we're talking about the reality of man living within each person's perceptors with the illusion that we're all on the same page and how this just causes so much misery my friend was was miserable about nothing you know i was sharing this information and then and then i said you know um got to the point where i was saying you know don't it's up to us to not allow others to rent space in our heads especially dead or negative space it's up to us my friend said well i think i have a i i don't i i had to talk i have to talk to you because I have a situation where I don't think that's where that fits. And I said, well, let's hear it, you know. And then she tells me, and it's exactly the same thing I'm talking about, which was this, she had was not realizing that she was not um, protecting her own boundaries. You know, she had done what so many people do, which is decided that what someone else says and thinks is more important than what she says and thinks and that her whole mission was to try to change that other person's view. Don't a lot of you all do that? Isn't that insane? It, that you can't do it. People don't change because of other people. 
we change because of something inside. Even if a person changes, because it, even if it appears the person has changed because you told them to, they had to decide to do it. But people want to hold on to the illusion and the fantasy that we have this power over people and that we can make people change and that I know it's good for you and if you don't do what I say, then we have a problem. That's what her, her illustrated thing was. And once I pointed it out to her, I said, oh my God, you're right. But I couldn't see it. It's like, yeah, this woman whose thoughts are separate from yours doesn't even live in the same town as you. It really has nothing to do with you. You had an exchange with her. She said something you didn't approve of and like, and you decided to set up, set up camp in your head with this information when you don't have to. That's that woman's world. When she walks away from you, her world goes with her. You're the one holding on to it. You do it to yourself. We all do this. Get the message, people. Most of our misery is, when it comes to other people, is self-made because we don't recognize our own power to, de to define ourselves instead of letting others, you know, do it. This whole idea that you're going to find someone who's going to um, take care of your needs and love you the way you can't love yourself, that's another illusion. It's not that it can't happen, but what a stupid thing when you know that the answer is within you. What a stupid thing to hold on to this illusion when you have the actual knowledge that you can do it yourself. I'm just here to share that perspective, you know. I don't know that it's right. It makes sense to me that's why... I follow it and I share it. Makes sense. Thank you. Someone else just bought more of my music. Thank you. More to go. Come and get it.